exclusive book review of The Trigon Empire, Volume 2. Mike Butterworth, Don Lawrence and Ron Embleton. Now this book this comes in at about 288 pages, just released in 2020. You can see now 2021, but uh, so it's just come out from Rebellion, part of their treasury of British comics. Yet another absolutely brilliant addition to their Treasury of British Comics, and I'm looking forward to Volume 3. Volume 3 will be out sometime whenever, and, well, I've already got that on pre-order, and this is absolutely beautiful. Colour all the way through, absolutely superb, and also on very nice quality glossy paper. You can see through to see the other page, but it's not excessively bad in any shape or form, and, well, I think... Just a superb volume, and I'm just going to quickly give it a review, run through some of the stories. Now, the stories are far from Look and Learn. So there's Look and Learn 332 all the way to, to 461, and that's that. But there's also, for start going through that book, just want to quickly also show the volume one. Volume one was also pretty amazing as well. Thoroughly enjoyed the stories there. And this one actually is a bit bigger, 302 pages, but uh, still an absolutely brilliant volume. So I'm just going to run through volume two. There's all the credits for the book. So you've got Mike Butterworth, Don Lawrence, Ron Hamilton, and of course many other people involved in the project. And then on to the stories. Now all these stories obviously are from uh, like Look and Learn, etc. And you've got this lovely forward right there by Chris Weston. Uh, that's very interesting. Learned quite a bit about, obviously, behind the scenes and all the various uh, Trigon Empire. Obviously, Vulcan Comics is actually quite a nice storyline. And Storm and other books as well. Now, this book is split into quite a few chapters. One thing that's pity that would be nice, of course, is that there's, there's no actual index. It would be really nice an index at the front so you could look down and say, oh, page 68, there's this story. Page 79, there's this story, and so on and so on. But, however... That would have been a nice feature, but they have broken it into chapters. And of course, the chapters are slightly unusual in the sense that you've got here the Trigon Empire, the three princes, and obviously X1 and V, or XIV. Obviously, uh, obviously the other earlier chapters, of course, were in uh, the Volume 1 book that I just quickly pointed out there. Originally published in Look and Learn 332 to 362. So you can tell that it's obviously. Uh, 32 issues. Now, I'm not certain if they were in every week. I assume they were. And it's from the 24th of May to the 21st of December, 1968. So it was quite a long period of time. You like Now, I assume, because I haven't got any look and learns, that it was like two pages. Two pages, maybe two, two, three pages. Possible. I don't know. I think it was two pages of the story. I don't actually... I assume that the uh, thing, because obviously you can see down the bottom... There's obviously some white space there. Now, I assume that, again, each time you can see a bit more space there. So there must have been Trigon Empire or something at the bottom, which has, of course, been removed from this. Because clearly it doesn't look like there's anything been removed above. So it's not like the, that someone's drawn this in. And the stories. Well, the stories themselves, I think, are absolutely first rate. And this, of course... A lot of often you read it and think, aha, that seems very similar to a certain story of the Roman Empire or, or some other situation. And you think, mm, interesting. But it's it's very nicely done. And it's got a great bit of conflict between all the uh, the characters in this. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's absolutely... I love also this sort of thing where you've got a lovely bit there with the, the coin, the artwork there. The artwork is just superb throughout. It truly is absolutely glorious artwork. Just super quality reproduction as well. Really, really, you have to, you know, you can study this. I love the construction as well. There's, you know, it's not like a standard panels. You've actually got like this zigzag in the thing. You can see a zigzag panel there. Just very unusual. Just and also like that, we've got a sort of trapezoid design there. And it's just very interesting one and it doesn't make it awkward to read you really can feel the, fl the flow there's no problem reading this it's not like sometimes i think always find when i get american comics sometimes you get when they do all these very clever sort of panel construction that you look at it and go well i'm not certain which panel is supposed to be the next panel 
in this, I don't think any, I, you know, you know the flow of this story, where this is going. And there's some real, I love the this character. You've got this very sort of evil character that's in, in the storyline. And it's full of these sort of characters. You just think, wow, what great characters. Yes, they're a bit dated. I have to say, they would be very, very, you know, they really do look sort of the, the jets and the, I mean, you look at it and think, well, now, of course, with Star Wars and all the vast amounts of change, it really look at this and think, is this the best that, uh, however, and the sort of the technology, et cetera, that's shown, he's rocketed out into the clean air kind of thing. And you got, but it's still at the same time, I just love this, like this giant crashing through, and you've got all the city, of course. The city, even though we're on this sort of futuristic, there's lots of futuristic elements in this, You've got all the buildings all look like ancient Rome, which is really nice. I love ancient Rome. So it's a, my, uh, my best mate turned around and says, why haven't you read the Dragon Empire? Well, so I put it off for ages and ages. And because he's got everything you like, he's got the Roman Empire, et cetera, et cetera, science fiction. And I agree. I was It was really silly of me not to read these because these are genuinely great stories. Like stories, and you've got these like great characters as well. You've got here, Peric, obviously he was a, Scientist, too. You got all the also, you got all these very, absolutely wonderful. Obviously, this is not on the earth, so you've got all these lovely uh, creatures here, and this lovely uh, ray that's from behind. <laughs> just wow, what great silly stories! But they are just, like I say, very evil scumbag characters. Quite often, there's this, not always, though. There is actually some subtlety. Some of the characters are very likable characters. You really quite, you think initially, you think, well, oh, I don't like that character. But by the end, the way the artist, the, the writer has created it, you actually warm to the character and actually appreciate the finale of the storyline. The Alien Dust. I mean, that's just the first one is just brilliant. The Alien Dust, where you've got this uh, uh, these, uh, planet they hit and this, this dust goes off and obviously you get some flowers and they see and it gets brewed and there's a lot of once that happened, I mean, actually, it's not carried out as far as it would probably would have happened. If that happened with the drink, then literally there would be much more chaos than did happen in this. But it's just a really, really good story. You got you got an opportunity to have to have a very evil sort of characters, and you got lots of other characters that are just all the way through this. Just the artwork is beautiful. It, though at, at times when you look at it, it, there is a certain element of a doll like. So you've got there, the woman there. They're not, they're obviously they look real, but at the same time they don't. There's just something so slightly odd about it. I love the, the word balloons as well. It doesn't really, and I was quite, I don't know if in the originals that they were done differently because there's actually one thing that's really nice in the back. They've got uh, a page with the original, all the writing. And you've obviously got varied lowercase and uppercase, whereas in here you've got it all done exactly the same all the way through. Now, so I'm not certain if they've obviously done that purposely or whether, you know, there was a reason for that. But it's still, I think it's still very well done. And I found it very easy to read. Though the writing does vary slightly in size. You've got here, you've got quite a large, large font. And then obviously there, I've got with this mountain, obviously, you've got high, but it's very small, very, very tiny. So it does sort of up and down a bit. So maybe they were the bits that were lowercase. You've got, also there's a lot of stories that do rely a lot on uh, people getting hypnotised or zapped. Where they sort of uh, buy and they suddenly, or drugged or something. There is quite a lot of reliance on that as a storyline. But I think it's overall, the, the artwork is just, uh, look at that, just beautiful artwork. Just absolutely glorious. And you've also got, I love this one as well. You've got this guy who's a mathematical genius who's obviously having the tyrant, starts off as tyrant, he's long lived the Trigon Republic. If those, and it's so on, you've got the storyline and you've got this this guy. And that storyline also is slightly developed again later once you get past it, obviously. Then some are shorter than others. Some of these are like probably five or six weeks storyline. And some along, you've got this alien invasion again, very similar to an earlier story with the uh, red dust storyline. You've got these uh, aliens that come down as well, and it's just full of just absolutely crackingly good stories. Again, I say, bit dated, the, and I love the this one's a great story where you've got this uh, uh, young lad as the uh, just 
anyway, I don't want to spoil all the stories because you know, that's, this is definitely a, probably one of my favourite books of 2020, as far as I'm concerned. I really generally did enjoy this book, and it's one of those ones I'm quite certain I will dig up and look at, bring out again, and reread quite often. So it's a great little story. I love this one, Five Labours. I mean, this is five labours. At least it wasn't like 11 or 13 or labours. Would have been pretty bad. But he had five labours. I really thought it was rather ridiculous, really. The, the emperor, really? Anyway. And this is obviously, the. I think this is the last one in terms of the look and learn. Because you've got that storyline. And it goes all the way through. And then you've got this other one, the Trigon Empire, the brief reign of Senos I. Uh, the Ranger Book for Boys, 1968, which is slightly odd because obviously it would have been better if they put it right at the front, maybe, since obviously it's out of sync. Sequence. Doesn't work. And then the finish with like a little bit of bonus material. Now, there is not a huge amount of bonus material in this. In fact, there's very little bonus material, but they have got this sort of, uh, like I say, showing the different writing, little typefaces that was used. So you can just see it up and down. But it's, uh, I love this one. It's uh, Empress Ursa. Now, Empress Ursa, now I don't know in volume three, maybe she turns up a lot more, but she's not really a major player in this story. It is very male centric. Most of the story, I, to be honest, there. You read this, virtually, there's hardly any women in the story. There's no, uh, there's a few, but not many. However, I say bonus material would be nice if there was some, maybe it doesn't exist. Who knows? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there's not any original artwork, any original designs or drawings and all those sort of things. But however, that's a minor criticism. I think that this, now I don't know, because I haven't got a look and learn to compare it with, I don't know if it's been resized. I mean, I assume that this is still the same size as the original. Maybe it was bigger, maybe it's not. I don't recall. Because I, I did read some of these stories a long time ago. I can't remember the size comparison. So uh, must get some uh, look and learns and compare the two. So you've got the uh, about the authors at the back, and that's that. So what an absolute... This is the second thrilling omnibus of the Lost... Lost? Lost? Science fiction, very strange. Lost, I don't think it's lost. Lost means that that's completely vanished into, you know, non-existence. My, you know, there's been lots of, there's been volumes of Trigon Empire books. I've got a couple of volumes of Trigon Empire books. So it hasn't, definitely hasn't been lost. Yes, slightly. From the 60s, the New York Times praised for the highly detailed visions of fantastic worlds. Again, fantastic worlds. It's only really one world, but anyway, it's uh, <laughs> most odds. You've got uh, the epic story of Dragon Empire's Rise and Fall, which sort of gets me a bit worried when I read back, because it, it's called that, of course, the Rise and Fall. I assume in Volume 3, Volume 4, whatever, how many more volumes there are left, that there will be obviously a decline, a problem where the city sort of collapses into, and we end up with the sort of barbarians and all that sort of stuff. All the dark ages kick in and uh, there's libraries and books and people with uh, the entire collection of rebellion books all on their bookshelves and obviously people are trying to destroy all that world of... No, anyway, that's getting carried away in terms of story. Like, incredibly painted comic art of Don Lawrence is produced in this period would solidify him as uh, one of the greatest comic book artists of all time. Well, I have to say, I agree. I think he is pretty good, even though it's... a Slightly, what would say, old-fashioned, but I think it's still very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Easy flowing, easy, great story, brilliant art, and also you've got on the cover as well. They've got lots of great examples of the artwork. I love that story. That story was great as well. So you can see, oh, that was a good story. Actually, that was a good story. They were all good stories. I don't think it was a duff story here. Maybe one. No, but not even really that. I think I enjoyed every single one of them. So uh, you got this, like 1968, May 68, it's 1970. And it's, uh, yeah, brilliant. So totally, totally, 100% recommended. Absolutely love this book. Along with, like, say, most of the other books that come out from Rebellion. Definitely worth checking out their Treasury of UK, Brit British comics. I always say UK comics. UK comics, British comics. Whatever. British comics. I think they've been doing a brilliant, brilliant service. And uh, well, Trigon Empire, Volume 2.
totally epic. <laughs>